and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, where we aim to maximize your understanding and minimize your need for memorization. Each episode will recap content, skills, and test-taking tips to help you succeed in May. I'm your host, Melanie Kingett, and your recap starts now. Hi, and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. Today's episode will recap Breaking Mendel's Rules. Let's zoom out. We're in Unit 5, Heredity. Topic 5.4, our big idea is information storage and transmission. For as long as I can remember, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Gravity makes objects fall, and water is wet. The simple, reliable things in life. Gregor Mendel enjoyed the reliable as well. Purple flowers were dominant to white flowers. And the F2 generation shows a 3 to 1 ratio. Well, move aside, Mendel, because life isn't all peas and carrots. And some rules are made to be broken. In today's episode, 2 plus 2 can equal 5. Or 6. Or maybe even a little bit of both. Genetically speaking, at least. Let's zoom in. We are going to work through some practice problems in each example. So get some scratch paper ready or download our study guide. Even though these are different scenarios, the same process of completing Punnett squares, foiling for gametes and dihybrid cross, and rules of probability still apply. The primary difference in non-Mendelian genetics will be how we interpret genotypic and phenotypic ratios of offspring. As for alleles, there are conventional ways for writing these types of problems so as to distinguish them from standard dominant scenarios. But so long as you interpret the results correctly, you can write them however you want. Shh, don't tell your teachers I said that. First up, incomplete dominance, which is exactly how it's described. Neither allele is fully dominant over the other, and so both are partially expressed when present. Consider the snapdragon flower, where capital C superscript R is red, and capital C superscript W is white. C for the color trait, and respective letters for each allele variety. A C superscript R homozygous flower is phenotypically red, and a C superscript W homozygous flower is white. But a CRCW heterozygous flower exhibits an entirely new intermediate phenotype, pink. Complete a heterozygous cross to show how 50% of the offspring will be pink. Each allele assorts independently, just as Mendel predicted, but there is not your standard 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio in the offspring. Instead, there is one red, two pink, one white. Another example of incomplete dominance is with sickle cell anemia. A heterozygous individual has sickle cell trait, with some cells normally shaped and others sickle shaped. Sickle cell anemia is also a great example of evolution within humans, as sickle cell trait provides malaria resistance in certain environments. Next, multiple alleles and codominance. Time for blood typing. You ought to make a pretty fair meal for a vampire. There are three alleles in the population that control the foundation of your blood type. Allele A, B, and O. Oh! Even though there are three alleles, you can still only inherit two. Two parents, homologous chromosomes. A and B are co-dominant over the recessive allele O. By convention, capital I's with superscripts for A or B are used to show their dominance, whereas a lowercase i is used to represent allele O. Considering all combinations, there are four primary phenotypes. Blood type A, expressed as homozygous or heterozygous with a recessive O. Blood type B, same pattern. Blood type AB and blood type O. Each blood type will dictate different antigens expressed on the cell and antibodies in the plasma to distinguish self from non-self. Let's practice. Show a Punnett square that produces all four blood types from a single cross. Need a challenge? Consider adding the rhesus factor in a new dihybrid cross problem. The rhesus factor is an additional antigen, which is how we have blood types such as AB positive or O negative. Hello, AP. So we'll just leave this blank for now, and I'll come back and say the subject name here. Student. 
I know that you are currently preparing for your AP subject name exam, but are you taking more than one AP course? Maybe you want to get a jump on courses you plan on taking in the future. Do you think that you're better than me? Is that what you think? Because I'll have you know that I... Along with the absolute recap, the subject name edition, we have podcasts and study guides for biology, chemistry, music theory, physics one, and U.S. government. So if you think you're better than me, I mean, if you are currently taking or plan on taking more than one AP course, visit www.theabsoluterecap.com. That's www.theapsoluterecap.com. And click on the courses link or search The Absolute Recap on any podcasting platform. And now... Back to the absolute recap, the subject name, edition. King Henry VIII, to six wives he was wedded, one died, one survived, two divorced, and two beheaded. I hate to break it to you, Henry, but you need to pass on the Y chromosome to get that son. In humans, females are genetically XX, whereas males are genetically XY. The Y chromosome although very small, contains the SRY gene, which leads to the development of male characteristics, like testes. It should be noted that some other species have sex determination with different chromosomes, like ZW in birds and haplodiploidy in bees. Sex-linked traits follow unique patterns. The overwhelming majority of sex-linked traits and often disorders and genetics problems, are located on the X chromosome and are recessive. Consider red-green colorblindness, a sex-linked recessive disorder. A colorblind father and normal mother have children, all of which have normal vision. However, one of their daughters grows up to have a son who is colorblind. Why? The father passed his affected X chromosome to his daughter, who was then a carrier. When she had a son, there was a 50% chance of passing on the colorblind chromosome. Since males only have one X chromosome, called hemizygous, they will express the trait if inherited. For this reason, sex-linked recessive disorders are more common in men and often pass from unaffected mothers to affected sons in pedigrees. The patterns that Mendel observed were true for genes located on different chromosomes, or at least those that were far apart on the same chromosome due to crossing over. Alleles assort independently, and we should see predictable even ratios in gametes. But when genes are located close to each other on the same chromosome, they are often inherited together and are said to be linked. How close are they exactly? This can be determined using data from genetics crosses to calculate recombination frequency, or the number of offspring that show a recombination of traits not seen in the parental generation. This segregation probability data can be further applied to calculate relative distance from one gene to another on a chromosome. This is often expressed as MAP units, or centimorgans, named after geneticist Sir Thomas Hunt Morgan. Note that recombination frequency can't be more than 50%, since this would indicate the alleles are sorting independently. Lastly, several traits are the product of multiple genes, like skin pigmentation and eye color. These are termed polygenetic traits, and result in a phenotypic range within a population. Be careful. Don't confuse this with pleiotropic traits, like Marfan syndrome, which results in one gene affecting multiple characteristics. Time for unit connections. DNA structure is reviewed in Unit 1, and Unit 6 extends phenotypic expression with the central dogma. Additionally, genetic variation connects to Unit 7, natural selection, as the driving force for evolution. All right, what about the exam? Practice those genetics problems. You don't need to memorize every example. Please don't try. But be familiar with different patterns and learn to recognize them from data sets and pedigrees. To recap, not all inheritance patterns show the predicted ratios of Mendel's laws. Incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, codominance, sex-linked, recombinance, and polygenetic traits show statistically different phenotypic ratios. Read the problem, identify the parental generation's gametes, Punnett square, and calculate your phenotypic and genotypic ratios. The process is the same, but interpretation differs. Coming up next on the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, Epigenetics. Today's question of the day is about genetics experiments. What organism did Sir Thomas Hunt Morgan perform genetic experiments on while developing his chromosomal theory of inheritance? 
For the answer to the question of the day, please follow us on Instagram at The Absolute Recap. That's the A-P-S-O-L-U-T-E Recap. Check out our website, theabsoluterecap.com, for episode schedules, study guides, virtual tutoring, and to sign up for our virtual classroom. The Absolute Recap is produced by Brad Kingett with music by Zach Caruso. Today's episode was written by me, Melanie Kingett. Thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to rate and review wherever you get podcasts. Time's up pencils down. Thank you for listening to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. Copyright 2020, Absolute Recap LLC, all rights reserved.